Tatum Bethune, Kalen Deloach, and DJ Linda stepped up in a huge way for the linebacking core for FSU last season. Who else can do that for 2023? We'll talk about that and more on today's edition of Locked on Seminoles. Dave, let's ride. You are Locked on Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to another edition of Locked On Seminoles. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Drake here. In today's episode of Locked On Seminoles, brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more by visiting fanduelcom on today to get started. I got myself Dave in the stream yard. David, you ready to talk to some about, about some linebackers? Yeah, I think. Probably a more surprising conversation than people might think today. I know, I know. So last, so I think over the past few seasons, linebacker was what a sort of a weakness heading like for a majority, the majority of uh, FSU fans that were worried about that. A lot of the, uh, oh, the middle is always open for any, you know, decent slot receiver and decent tight end. But this past season, we saw the addition of Tatum Bethune. We saw Candelo take another step forward. We also saw DJ Lundy, who has been, Someone that I think has been on a similar track as a team, as a team for the past few seasons. How do you feel that linebackers performed last season? Well, I, I guess we should probably talk expectations for linebackers then going into last season, which was, I think for the last like five seasons, we've all thought to ourselves, I mean, it has to get better, right? Like it can't get worse. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that tone and, too, <laughs> and it and it can't stay the same because it's so bad that to be this bad again would be almost impossible. So the expectations were anything better than nothing is a win. But but really, with Tatum Bethune coming in, I think we all, I I think we all were like cautiously optimistic that with that happening and with Shannon coaching the linebackers, maybe that change was what was needed. Mm-hmm. He's had a lot of success at all of his stops. That'll put a lot of guys in the NFL. Um, and, and so I think we all thought like, maybe this is the year that they don't suck. Right. And they definitely didn't suck. I, th- I think you mentioned the most interesting name of all DJ Lundy last year was by far our highest rated linebacker. Um, We're talking. Was he really? Yeah. DJ Lundy was the seventh highest rated defender on our team overall. And was his 74.4 grade was. Almost over four points higher than Tatum Bethune, who was a 70. So How how many snaps though? I will say DJ Lundy played 383 snaps. Tatum Bethune played 502. So he still played a significant number of snaps. That's that still, was a that, large that's, sample. That's still a big example. Yeah, I'm about to say that's still a big sample. Okay. So DJ Lundy, I think, shocked a lot of people. Maybe he didn't shock a lot of people because I don't think a lot of people realize how well he played because I don't think a lot of people had very high expectations or were looking for him on the field. But when DJ Lundy's out there, I think you know exactly what you're getting in him and knowing what you're getting out of our linebackers. Tatum Bethune, you're getting a solid player who's not going to make big mistakes, who's going to ma- who seems to have, just have a knack for being in the right place on the field at the right time, which is something we otherwise d- didn't have on this roster. And then you add to that Kalen Deloach, who became a heat seeking missile last year. His PFF grade does him absolutely no justice. Um, if you look at his grade, you would think he was terrible last year, actually. But that that was not the case. He kind of blossomed into his own. And, and I don't mean to like selectively decide to like PFF when they're good and not when they're bad. I, I, that's not what I'm trying to do here. Kalen Deloach, his, y- you had to watch with your eyes because he, he just, his quickness and his acceleration to the football this past year gave me a lot of hope that what we're going to see in 2023 is good, if not great, linebacker play. And I think one play that kind of showed you not from this past year, but from the year before how he is the heat seeking missile and he has the talent to basically be great in space and also great attacking the ball carrier was that safety against Boston College, where literally you see him say he 
sizes the dude up and just goes right towards him. And I'm like, I'm going to pray for this kid real quick because that I knew that hit kind of hurt. And then with Tatum Bethune, <clears throat> excuse me, and with Tatum Bethune, it was something that you knew he was a solid player. You saw his stats from from UCF. I think he had, what, like 90-something tackles from the year before, 10 and, a half sack, uh, 10 and a half tackles for a loss, I think two or three sacks, I think, from over his previous stop. And then you're right with Brandon Shannon. He was someone that was brought in, you know, with Chris Marf. He was leaving. Brandon Shannon already was an analyst on staff. And then he was promoted not only to the linebacking role, but also the co DC role in tandem with Adam Fuller. So with that, you see the kind of a different kind of voice in the room, which helped this defense perform a bit better from the season before. They've improved every single year before after that. But the linebacking core has been able to basically mask some of the deficiencies with the defensive line, but also help and not be a complete and utter liability actually for, um, in, in the middle of the field, allowing your secondary to kind of play a little bit more, right? Yeah, 100%. And this may seem great. I mean, this is so crazy to me that Kalen Delos played 598 snaps. PFF graded him as the 33rd best defender at, on our team under 60. Yeah, that, that's, that's just wrong. I'm just, I, that's just wrong. That is wrong. I, I don't, you know, sorry over there, PFF. I don't know who was watching that tape. You guys got it wrong there. You, you should rewatch that one uh, because Kalen Delos was one of the 10 best defenders uh, on that field almost at all times. Uh, it, she, he, sure he had lapses so did so does everybody um but when, he was one of the most physically impressive and standout players on tape so great to have him back great to have tatum bethune back uh tatum bethune what i really loved about his game last year is he graded equally in run defense pass rush and tackling tackling being the big one you can't have a linebacker that can't tackle when we have mm-hmm. we, we've had too much of that for too long where our linebackers are just turnstiles and he grayed out that highly also while ha- having a shoulder injury for right. the for the entire season after Louisville. Like that's still yep. kind of extremely impressive. So fully held Tatum Bethune for next season. We'll talk about it. That's something to watch out for. That is exactly right. And and that's not the end of the conversation because you have guys like Brandon Gant, like you mentioned, who graded just under a 70 on 176 snaps, who did excelled in run defense. And as you saw in that Oklahoma game, run defense, I mean, we could we could do a little bit better sometimes. So Adding him, getting him a little more experience in the linebacker spot, added to those other guys, sets up well. I mean, we'll talk about it in the next seven. Before we do that, folks, we talk about our friends over at Built Bar. Folks, are you looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and the calories? Then you got to try Built Bar, folks. I got a wedding in a year. Dave knows Dave's, Dave's been holding me accountable for, you know, exercising, eating better, getting my big butt up and doing some exercise. So, and also always grabbing a Built Bar, whether Dave, as the cookie dough connoisseur sends me one of those, or I grab myself a cherry barcia. But if you're not fans of those, don't worry. There are 18 other delicious flavors to choose from because basically they're all covered in 100% real chocolate and just taste like a real candy bar. And now you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to order it online. You can go over to your local Walmart or your Sam's Club and grab them today, whether it be a four bar, bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. Or like if you're like myself and you're more of the chocolate kind, grab yourself a briny batter or a little bit of cinnamon, grab yourself a churro, head over to Sam's Club, head over to Walmart or go to built.com as always. And folks, you'll thank me later, but let's get healthy for 2023. Cookies and cream is good, by the way. Cookies and cream is very good, folks. And folks, we are back. We are rocking. We're rolling here on Locked On Sam's. We want to thank each and every single one of you for making us your first listen each and every single day. Now, Dave, I like how you actually mentioned Brendan Gantz towards the end of that segment because I think going to the future, it's very important to talk about players like him. Brendan Gantz originally was a safety when he signed here as a high for four-star a few seasons ago. He made the transition to linebacker this past season, and he's someone that, quite frankly, with death purposes, he's going to be a very important piece for his linebacking core, and we saw that actually he he excelled when given a challenge. You know, Not only were that, he was he asked to basically learn a new position you know, over a spring, over a summer, but he looked good when he actually played in mop and some and in some duty this past year. So, how do you feel about this linebacking core depth wise hitting in twenty twenty three? Well, I feel very good about the linebacking core going into twenty twenty three. Um, I'll get to Brennan Gant in a second, but uh, look, if the linebacker play is in twenty twenty three, what it was in twenty twenty two. I think that's fine. I think that's fine enough to get to where you need to get. Uh, 
to where, to where you want to get, where your goals are, AC championship, potential playoff aspirations. I think they need to get better than that if you're going to win everything. Um, but I think what they performed last year was leaps and bounds better than what we've seen. Like I said, that's not, maybe that's not the standard, but there was solid improvement along the linebacking corps. And it wasn't a liability. It wasn't where, like you said, if a tight end was running a slant, we were about to start his Heisman campaign, you know, or a slot receiver, you know, running a comeback. And, well, somehow he's going to take that to the house. Don't know how that happens, but here we are. Thayer Thomas from like two years ago. I'm like, why is the president of the Glee Club literally going for 150 yards against Sun two catches? Yeah, that, that happened too often. And that happened very often. And that was mostly the fault of our linebacking corps over the years. But that's not the case anymore. Um, I, I'm interested to see if there's improvement to be had for Tatum Bethune because I don't want to say he's reached his ceiling, but he's a very good player who's going to play in the NFL. And I don't know why he came back because I think he could have left, but I'm really glad he did because having him in your linebacking corps means it's going to be good just because he's there. Uh, it, I think there's improvement to be had by Kalen Deloach in a lot of aspects of his game. Like we said, he excelled in pass rush. Um, but look, there, there's definitely things he can work on. Um, the PFF grade, I'll tell you it's wrong all day. But, you know, there's there's definitely things he can work on. And I think he will. I think he has all of the physical tools to be a great Florida State linebacker. He also and knows where to be, too. Which that, is the thing too. That's the most just, important thing. It just felt... Tell. It's instinct. Like he he has it. You're right. Um, Brennan Gant was an interesting case study last year, and I'm glad you brought him up because he was awful in coverage, and th- which is funny because he moved down from the safety spot. And I think because he moved down, the coaches thought, well, we should probably just try him in coverage. Well, he had 63 coverage snaps. That was a third of his total snaps last year, and his coverage grade was a 63.7. Not great. His run defense. Awesome. So I don't know if that was a product of the coaches putting him in bad spots or it, just still him getting acclimated to the linebacker position. But having another year to do that, I mm-hmm. think will give him a really good opportunity to improve and not be a liability in pass coverage. Honestly, a 63 in your first year, it's like, I mean, it's, it's not great, you know, as a grade, but as your first year, it's like, I mean, that's not terrible. It's just something to work with there, I think, with that grade. Not only that, we have those players, DJ Lundy, too, will take another step forward. Yeah. Um, that's someone that who I thought should have been a fullback, but he's kind of showed that he, hey, he can he can do both after yep. showcasing last season. And not only with that, you have the young guns like Omar Graham, the the linebacker from the 2020 uh 2022 class, who's now got a full year under his belt. We're not having to force we're not forced to be being we're not being forced to play freshman super early. He actually is able to sit back, learn, acclimate to the playbook, and also basically put on a little bit of weight before being thrown out there. And then you have freaking Tim Riggins. Uh, the the kid from the the kid from Antigua, California, Blake Nicholson, the kid that's coming in, basically very athletic. He also played, I think, tight end or wide receiver, actually yeah. over in California. So this linebacking core, while not numerous, it feels like the quality is very high with this group heading into the season, especially with the return of Tatum Bethune, who's someone that first off his name just sounds like just sounds like a linebacker. Tatum <laughs> Bethune, Tatum Bethune is bringing the boom. I mean, I love I love the I love that kid. The kid's a really solid player, and this is a linebacking core that, quite frankly. Should have FSU fans like finally ecstatic and be like, oh, we don't have a liability on defense anymore, which is great. Yeah, that, that's right. Um, I, I don't want to say, all right, if, if you get nervous about these kind of conversations, close your ears, okay? But I, I think linebacking position, setting aside quarterback because it's not fair to include in this discussion, is the one position, though, where if you take out our best player at that spot, Dana Bethune, I think that changes an awful lot of what that play looks like throughout the year. Um, You saw, you kind of saw what Fabian Lovitz, what what his absence last year when he was injured did to that defensive line and the defense as a whole. It was catastrophic when he wasn't on the field. Not, Not that we were terrible, but the difference between him being out there and not out there, just one player was night and day. I, I do think that that's the kind of situation you'd get if Tatum Bethune, for whatever reason, uh, couldn't play for any period of time. Um, so I, I hope we don't have to rely on those freshmen you mentioned. I have really high hopes for Blake Nicholson and Omar Graham. Uh, well, Omar Graham's a sophomore. Remember that. He actually, he, he, remember he's not, he's the only freshman is Blake Nicholson, actually, overall. I have really high. Well, we haven't seen any of them. So I, I have really high that's hopes for those point. guys. But 
if if you're talking about a championship aspiration team, you're typically not relying on freshmen that are not like super five stars, like top 10 players in the country. Uh, I mean, just go look back at our championship roster. Every every young guy that was playing was a five star. And that's what tends to happen with these championship teams. And not that those kids won't develop into players that are playing like five stars, but in their first, you know, in their first game experience at Florida State, uh, I just don't expect them to be playing significant snaps. It's good to have them. Good to have them on the practice out there practicing and getting, uh, you know, getting those looks out there in practice so they can be good in 2025 or 2024. But 2023 is where your stars have to shine. That has to be Tatum Bethune. That has to be DJ Lundy. That has to be Kalen Deloach. And that has to be Brandon Gantt. Those are the four. You have to ride those four into the ground. And if if something were to happen at that spot to anyone other than Tatum Bethune, it would be okay. I don't think you'd see much of a drop off, if any. Um, but he, we need him out there. We need Tatum Bethune on that wall. I mean, yeah, they are. They, I mean, they are going to be the core four. And I think you are right about that. I mean, while we do have the quality for depth purposes, if you do lose yeah. one. You can somewhat weather the storm, but I do think Tan, Tan Booth and also Kane Dillich, if you lose one of them, you you have to run the other one out there a lot more of the time. And basically, like you're saying, run them into the ground. You have to also be careful with that because both those players do have not an extensive injury history, but they do have a recent injury history. And that's something that you, want, you do want to be careful with because one other thing about, about players is that about championship teams is that the players need to remain healthy. And for most of those teams you mentioned, like ourselves 2013, C. George this past year, those teams actually will be able to remain healthy for the full majority of <clears throat> the year. <clears throat> Excuse me. But before we actually head out of here, Dave, we need to talk to you about our friends over with a title sponsor, and that is our friends over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And as always, folks, it is time for the FanDuel Sportsbook Fade Dave segment of the day of the millennia of the week because we're just really excited about our new sports betting po- spark partner for lockdown because of the number one sportsbook in America. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. And Dave, let's talk about World Series odds. Yeah. Spring baseball starts in only four more days. The World Baseball Classic is next month. I will be at that. So, folks, if you want to hit me up while down here in Miami, hit me up. But, Dave, World Series odds, I'll give you the top six teams and want to make you, you to make your most value pick from these teams. Sure. The Astros lead the pack at plus 600 to repeat. Yeah. Yankees are plus 650. The Dodgers are plus 750. The, <laughs> the Mets are plus 750. Oh, <laughs> That's really cute. Uh, the San Diego Potters are plus 1,000. And the Atlanta Braves are plus 1,000. And folks, I did not see the Marlins. Oh, the Marlins are at plus 10,000. So that is appropriately valued there as well. So Dave, for the top six, what are you taking for best value? The Marlins should be plus a million. And that still wouldn't be a good value. Bet. Dave is still salty for 2003, but I'm just going to put that out there on the record. Just Drake, it just can answer, be plus- answer, 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 the, answer the top six question, Dave, before I mute you. I, I hate the answer to this question, so I don't really want to answer it because the answer is that it's the Dodgers, and every friggin' year it's going to be the Dodgers that I'm going to bet on to win it, and I'll be surprised when they don't. Um, really? you, you don't amass that level of talent and spend that kind of money, and they're doing what the Yankees did in the 90s and the 2000s. Uh, you just outspend everybody for long enough. Eventually, something good's going to happen, and that's where we are. Wow, I'm kind of surprised. I thought you'd be going maybe with the Padres. They got, no. I think they got a, a better staff. They, I, they, I think they got a really good team. The Yankees, I think, also have Yankees yep. and my personal opinion, also have a better team too than the Dodgers. I just don't, I don't trust. Prove it to me. Mm, okay, well, folks, Dave says prove it to him. Dave says take the Dodgers a plus seven fifty. So fade Dave and take the Marlins a plus ten thousand. No, I'm not going to ask you to burn your money, folks, because that is a terrible idea. <laughs> No, I don't even believe that. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on L S U K E D O N to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on L S U K E D O N. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, Dave. It's the time of year. It's the time of the day. I'm going to hand the ball off to you. Please steer us to the landing. Okay. Here's what I want to do, talk about for a few minutes right now. The coaching staff kind of changed the defensive base scheme and philosophy, um, I think, to accommodate the poor linebacking play that we've seen for too long. And they they changed to a base two linebacker set. So we're, we're 
most often only playing two linebackers out there. And that's why when we talked about having a core of four players, you didn't need it. You didn't need six to make a two deep. Um, there's going to be times where there's going to be more than two linebackers out there in your heavy sets and on the goal line. But typically, you're only seeing two out there. My question for you, Drake, is this linebacking unit, I think you could say, was decent, somewhere between decent and good last year. I, I don't know if you would say good, but somewhere between there. Mm-hmm. What exactly needs to happen for this bunch to to take the next step into better than good is it just a personnel thing where you need to bring like these blue chip linebackers these pedigreed linebackers into the system that georgia and alabama and clemson get every year or is there something else that can be done besides bringing in the best recruits to make this a better than good linebacking unit I think one thing is just staying healthy because I do think for those first few games we saw Tatum Booth and actually fully healthy the linebacking core actually did play actually it was probably if you graded it out on on that you know bad to gray scale that probably was solidly in the good and then with Kalen Deloach I think he actually showcases that he's a very good talent but he can't do everything also by himself when DJ Lundy I know we're big fans of him on the show he's done very well still in coverage he's not your fastest linebacker yeah. and that's something that if this was the 90s, it'd be awesome. He'd be a great linebacker. But right now, you, what people are moving towards more towards is the, the the much quicker and still having that size kind of linebacker. You see, I think the best example of that right now in college football of, 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 of an elite player of that caliber is a Harold Perkins for LSU, that, which we are going to see. Um, and I think overall, I think it's a mixture of both. I do think the... I do think coaching wise, you definitely see developmentally the players are playing much better. But I do think that eventually over time, you are going to have to bring in the personnel that are actually much more ready from the jump, even though I do think with Bethune and Deloach and actually also with DJ Lennon, especially, I think after actually having new instruction from Randy Shannon, you're going to see another leap this next year, kind of similar to how we saw with Jordan Travis under Mike Novell, under the QB coaching here, that you saw you saw like growth there, incremental growth there, and then the next season, just a leaps and bounds improvement. I definitely see that for the linebackers for this year, going from decent to something to actually pretty good this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got to think this wasn't a problem for Tatum Bethune, but for a guy like DJ Lundy, you got to think you have to unlearn some things like you as the coaches, you as Randy Shannon have to make his do like the men in black thing and wipe his brain of everything you've been taught at linebacker because everything that this linebacking unit had been taught for years was it wasn't just like it was subpar, like they, they were just not being taught correctly. They weren't where they were supposed to be on the field. Um, They weren't doing the things they were supposed to be doing. And these were guys with plenty of talent. Like that was never the issue. Um, So, yeah, I think I think you're right. I think the personnel here is capable of being better Mm -hmm. than good. I look, maybe there's still some figuring out like the strengths and weaknesses. I, I, I was surprised to see that more than a third of DJ Lundy's snaps last year came in coverage. Um, and he actually rated graded better than Brandon Gant in coverage, which again, just shocking stuff. So I don't, if you're going to put DJ Lundy out there a bunch, for example, um, is it a surprise to the offense that you're putting him out in coverage? Do they not expect it? And does that throw them off? I don't know, but I'm interested to see with now that these guys have another year under this scheme, like you're saying under Randy Shannon's tutelage how differently they approach things. Do you see a lot less coverage snaps out of DJ Lundy? Do you take, you know, are are you, what what are you doing with Brendan Gann? What are you learning about what he's capable of doing? How is he taking the next step? There's, there's plenty of room here already. I think you're right for this linebacking unit to grow. And I, you know, I, I do wonder what's going to happen. What happens with a guy like Steven Dix, who's been here forever and still on the roster. Um, that's, name people have forgotten about but it was a top 20 linebacker in his class not that long ago and you know had some plays that stood out throughout his career so you know there's there's still some i still have some hope with him just like i do with travis jay that those guys are going to pan out and have a productive season um and there's there's talent there's talent there's improvement to be had and i think it's possible that this linebacking unit can be good or better no, I completely agree with that. Not only that can they get good or better, but also we here at Lost and Subs can get good or better. It folks, all thanks to you because we want to thank each and every single one of you for all love and support and basically helping us through this ride for almost, I think we're actually going to go up on our two-year mark with Locked On, actually, I think not next, I think it's next month, right, is our two-year anniversary. I think so, yeah. 
I think so. And folks, please, as always, want to thank each and every single one of you for making us your person each and every single day. But as always, Dave, please take us home. Yes. Thank you, Drake, for not telling me. Finally, I love it. And I love each and every one of you for listening to us and making us your first listen. It is wonderful. And we are glad to have you. Couldn't do it without you. For the you for the podcast, find us anywhere you find your podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, Google Play, all those places. There's more, and I don't know them. And for the YouTube, give this video a like if you could. It takes literally two seconds, and we would greatly appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications, ding that little bell. You'll know when our episodes drop. And as always, leave us a comment. Who is going to be the most improved linebacker on this team this year? And folks, thanks for making Locked On Assembles for us each and every single day. For your second listen, please check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball, experts Isaac Shade and Andy Patton bring you everything you need to know off the court, plus hear from big name experts, coaches, and players throughout the basketball landscape. Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast from, because folks, I do know FSU basketball, it ain't entertaining, but at least there actually is some good college basketball being played out there right now. But as always, for Dave, this is Drake, and we'll see you all next time. Unlocked on Seminoles. Take care, everybody. Go on. Home.